Hey there, this is Dan back again with another Book of the Week review. This week I'm reviewing the book Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. Now this biography has just been recently released, and as you probably know, it's the first book that Steve Jobs has ever agreed to be involved in to discuss his life. You probably also know now that Steve Jobs recently passed away of pancreatic cancer, and it was a very tragic event and probably one of the biggest media events of 2011. There was a massive um, outpouring of respect and, and gratitude for the work that Steve Jobs has done in his career. And this book really comes on the coattails of that. It was given an early release because of the, his passing. And uh, it's an interesting biography. There's a lot of great lessons in here, a lot of interesting stories and anecdotes, funny, sad, in, very interesting, and uh, gives you some good insights about Steve Jobs as a person that you cannot garner from the outside. So, well worth checking out. And I wanted to share just some ideas and insights that I got from this book. Even though it is a biography, it's a story, there's also a lot of life lessons, I think, in this book. And I wanted to share those in this review today. Now, I think the most important thing to understand about this book is that it's not a technology book. It's a book about Steve as a person. It's garnered from many, many interviews that Walter Isaacson did with Steve one-to-one -one at his home, talking about different parts of his life and his philosophy and different things like that. And he also interviewed many, many people who work with Steve now and in the past, friends and family, celebrities, a lot of different people, to really try and get a complete picture of who Steve Jobs was as a person. Now, I imagine that that was no easy task because Steve was a very enigmatic person, an intensely private person, and, and a little bit temperamental as well from what you read in this book. He wasn't the easiest person to get along with at times. So I imagine that that was a very challenging job, and I think Isaacson does it very, very well. There are other Steve Jobs biographies out there, ones like Icon, Return to the Little Kingdom, Inside Steve's Brain, and then there's also the horrible rip-off books like I Leadership and The Innovation Secrets of Steve Jobs. Everyone's had a crack at trying to characterize and to personify and to figure out what it is that makes Steve Jobs tick. And honestly, even in this book, you don't really get to the core of it. But I think there's a better view of it from the inside looking out than we'll ever get from any of those other books. So I really recommend if you're interested in Steve Jobs, check out this book first because this is the one that you get it from the horse's mouth. Finally, we get to see behind the curtain and understand what makes the man tick. Now, rather than share the story of Steve's life and why he did what he did, I'll leave that to you if you want to read the book for yourself. But what I want to share is a couple of thoughts, things that really stood out to me, lessons that I took away from Steve Jobs, things that he may not have even consciously known that he did, but actually seemed to propel him forward. The first thing that I learned from this book is that Steve really believed in himself. He saw himself as a very intelligent person, he saw himself as a little bit ahead of the curve, and he really gave himself permission to decide what the world should be like. Now, there's famous quotes that he said that, you know, people don't know what they want until you show it to them, things like that. That's a good example of the fact that he believed in himself and his abilities and his ideas. He also believed in his team as well. His team were really a big part of the innovations. And even though from the outside looking in, you kind of imagine that Steve was in there inventing everything himself at Apple, it was actually a huge team of people behind him gathering ideas and bringing them together. And he was kind of the figurehead, the yes or no person at the end of the day. Now, whether that can be duplicated without Steve is an interesting question and will remain to be seen. Whether someone else has that belief in themselves to say yes or no, the confidence to believe that they're smart enough to see ahead of the curve. Another important lesson I learned from this book is not to compete with other people, but to create and innovate. Now that's a really important concept and it's something that comes from the um, writings of Peter Drucker and different business sort of gurus, but the idea is really personified in Steve Jobs. He never really competed with other computer or technology companies. He always set out to create something better, innovate in some way, and to bring an edge to what he did. Now obviously Apple products are known for their aesthetic, the way they look on the outside as well as the way they operate on the inside. They're extremely different to other computers in that they don't run the same software, they don't have the same operating system at all. So that is really an example of innovating rather than trying to compete. And you can see, obviously, towards the end of the career of, of Steve's career at Apple, he really saw the benefits of innovating because they were leading the market, not just in personal computers, but also in phones and music iPod players and also in tablet computing. They really had taken innovation to the edge and really taken over the marketplace because of that.
The next idea that I gathered from this book is that Steve really made his work an adventure. You know, Steve wasn't really a show-off kind of rich person who travelled around the world living lavishly or, you know, dressing really fancy or hanging out with celebrities or doing things like that. He focused his time into the products and the creation of an experience for his customers. And that was his adventure. That was the thing that he was passionate about. And I really respect him for that because he did what he loved to do for the whole of his life. Now, at times, obviously, that didn't work in the era of Next. Obviously, Next Computers, it wasn't as great. The early era of Pixar, it was a really tough time. But he stuck with those things along with his teams, and they really brought them to a point where they became something worthwhile. And I think that's an important point, that along the way, it was an adventure for Steve. He was interested, he was engaged, he was enjoying what he was doing, and he was living his life to the fullest. Probably the most important thing that I learned from Steve is the idea of having a strong reality. Now, what I mean by that is that Steve Jobs tended to convince himself very definitely of something and then follow through on that. Now, there's a lot of talk in the book about what they call the reality distortion field, where Steve would basically get an idea, share it with a team of people, and because his belief in that idea was so strong, people around him would start to believe it. And sometimes when he would leave the room, they would start to wonder why they agreed with him, because his sense of reality was so strong. And I think there's a lot of value in that. If you, as a person, believe in something and you have a sense of um, definiteness about who you are and what you think, other people will tend to fall into line behind you and believe you as well. Whereas if you don't, if you give in to the beliefs of others and you don't feel strong about who you are, people won't respect you and won't let you lead them as much. So that's a huge lesson that I took away from this book, that idea of having a very strong reality and being who you are no matter what the cost. Another interesting thing that I found about Steve Jobs is that in the public he's very idolised. And I myself, as, a, as an individual, thought he was a pretty cool guy and really respected what he did. And it wasn't until I read this book that I really started to think, why is it that people have such a strong love for Steve Jobs as a person? You know, he wasn't the most uh, friendly person, he was a very private individual, kind of scruffy, he wasn't super charismatic in person by all accounts a lot of the time, but for some reason people really rallied around him and felt like he was someone to admire and to respect. And I wanted to figure out why that was, and I came up with a couple of ideas, things that I think made the difference with Steve Jobs compared to other business people of his time. The first thing is that he was very counterculture. You know, there's a lot of stories early in the book about how he wouldn't wear shoes in the office and he was always trying strange New Age diets. He's sort of a proponent of, you know, rock and roll and, and Bob Dylan and the Beatles and, you know, taking LSD and different things like that. He was a real hippie when he was young. And I think that resonates with a lot of people because he kind of bucked the system in a way. He messed with the way things were and he still achieved what he wanted. Another reason I think people like Steve is because he was very honest and direct. If he liked something, he liked it. If he didn't, he told you straight to your face. And that's something that a lot of us struggle with in life because we want to be liked by other people. We don't want to cause negative feelings to to come towards us. Whereas Steve seemed to not have that gene for whatever reason. He could just tell people directly what he thought. If something sucked, he would tell you to your face. And, you know, it's an interesting thing. When you read this book, you'll see a lot of experiences that people have working with Steve and living with him where he's very direct and almost a little bit, um, you know, acting like a spoiled brat in some ways because he's so honest and direct. And you think, wow, you know, he really could have curbed his personality. But I actually think that's a reason we admire him because he had such a strong will and a strong personality, and he was honest about it, and he was who he was. Another reason people really admired Steve, I think, is that he was very non-glamorous. You know, he's well known for wearing the same thing every day. He's well known for not being, you know, the best dressed or sort of the best kept person. And uh, there's a lot of interesting stories in the book about that as well. But, you know, it kind of shows his, his simplicity focus in life. He was a very zen person. And I think a lot of people admired that because even though he was worth several billion dollars by the end of his life, he lived in a normalish house. He didn't have security guards. He drove the same car. You know, he was a pretty regular guy. And I think at the end of the day, even though we kind of uh, glamorize the rich and famous and we kind of look up to them in one way, we also realize that it's kind of a bit of a facade and it's not really worth much. And I think Steve Jobs kind of broke through that facade very well. He had the opportunity, undoubtedly, to be over the top and to live a really glamorous life, and he chose to be more simple. And personally, I really respect that, and I think a lot of people out there do. That's one of the characteristics of Steve Jobs that really defined who he was, was that desire for simplicity and genuineness in life. 
Finally, I think the reason that we all like Steve Jobs is because he won. At the end of the day, his crazy ideas and his kind of outlandish approach to things, his desire to innovate and to push the envelope actually paid off. He actually came out on top with things like the iPod and the iPhone, and finally, before he passed away, the iPad. And now he's passed the reins to the next generation at Apple. We'll see what they can do with things like iCloud and the next innovations that they come up with. Now, I don't think that Steve Jobs could ever be replaced. You know, as a person, his image is probably a little bit, you know, overblown. Sometimes we kind of see him as the, the icon, the one who was making all the decisions behind the scenes. But at the same time, I think there's a lot of work going on underneath what he was doing that really brought a lot of the success out for Apple. So I'm, I'm confident that in the future there will be a team in place now and that really is Steve's legacy, is that team who will lead things into the next generation. As for Steve himself, obviously he leaves behind a family of young children and his wife and it's very tragic his passing at such a young age. He burned very bright and it seemed that he burned out early but what an impact and what a legacy he made on the world. So for me personally, this has probably been my favourite book of 2011, definitely my most anticipated. I'd really recommend checking it out if you're a fan of Apple or you're interested in Steve Jobs. Read this book first before you read any others. Take some time with it, make some notes about what impacts you, and share your thoughts on this video after you've read this book. What was it about this book that you liked? What did you take away from it? I'd love to hear your thoughts and share with you. So thanks for tuning in once again, and I'll catch you next time for the next book review. Thanks a lot.